Today, you and I are going to do something a bit unorthodox, and that would be driving a brown car. A very brown car. Now, perhaps it may have some other things going for it, like multiple propulsion systems and over 500 horsepower, but it's brown. Today's discussion under the hood is not so much about output figures, rather it's a shuffling of the Panamera deck. You see, the car we're driving is a totally new Panamera model. Yes, it's a 4S, but it's one that's had a hybrid system grafted onto it. Yet we need to look at it somewhat in reverse, not focus on the hybrid system, rather the gasoline engine that's attached to it. Now, in gas-only applications, it's 434 horsepower. This, with the hybrid system, is 552 total system horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque. Now, further shuffling the Panamera deck, you may remember the most basic models may do with a single turbo 3-liter V6. That is no longer the case. Rather, they use this same twin turbo 2.9 V6, yet it's been detuned to 325 horsepower. Then the transmission, and this is something we've learned over many years of driving Porsche hybrids that thankfully they don't use a CVT. This is no exception, an eight-speed PDK driving all four wheels. Now, somewhat behind the scenes, you and I are getting an incredibly early look at the 4SE hybrid, so much so that this car is a German market car. It's been flown over to the U.S. for a very short period of time. So I don't have any EPA MPG estimates because the EPA hasn't tested it yet. And when it comes to weights and measures, only have an estimate. Now, one huge hint vice here. This car you're looking at is very special. We will cover this further in the episode. But it is an executive model, which means it's longer and weighs a bit more. And the estimates I have are about 5,100 pounds just north of that, which would mean just north of 2,300 kilos. That said, I do have some performance figures, and they are staggering considering the size of this vehicle and the weight we just discussed. 0 to 60, 3.5 seconds, and VMAX, 185 miles an hour. You and I need to approach today's science experiment a bit differently. Yes, we have two propulsion systems. However, three drive modes we've got to get to. Let's get to the obvious, and that is 100% gas mode. And this really shouldn't be a surprise for us because we've driven this engine in many Panameras, many Cayennes, and this is absolutely the sweet spot for the Porsche practical sedan world. And it has everything to do with the way it delivers power. There is such a wide power band, literally from 2,000 RPM all the way up to 5,500 RPM. Okay, so one propulsion system down. Let's bring in the second and go into what this car is all about. Get a bit aggressive here. And the first thing you notice is you don't notice anything. You don't notice a handoff. The EV system is seamless. Really what the EV system does in a Panamera 4S is make it a much higher performance vehicle. One where you'd have to give it a second thought. This or a Panamera Turbo, at least the one from last year or the one that's going to probably come out in the next couple of months, it's really that good with the EV propulsion system. One of the bigger changes is the battery, and an aspect that I find incredibly fascinating is how it's packaged. That, in turn, is broken out into two parts. First and foremost, where does the battery reside in the car? That's still underneath the storage compartment in the rear. Then there's the size of the overall battery pack. That hasn't changed at all, yet the capacity has gone up like 30%. So how do they accomplish that? Well, they change the chemical formulation of the cells, which has enabled them to increase the density of the battery. That, in turn, translates to a change from 14.1 to 17.9 kilowatt hours. Now, I'd love to tell you what the EPA says this car can drive on a full charge, but the car hasn't been tested by the EPA yet. In my short time with the car, I was able to get 32 miles of EV range. Driving dynamics is not at all a surprise here. It's very familiar territory, even with the second propulsion system and the extended wheelbase of the executive body style. And why that is, is because there's three levels of damper control. There's the basic normal mode, there's sport and sport plus, but most importantly, it is separate from the drive mode. And that one change makes all the difference in the world in using this thing around town or even Canyon 
roads like this and using it with aggression. Maybe aggression is a bridge too far, but you get what I'm saying. You can drive it like a Porsche and you're not hampered by some faraway engineer and what they programmed into the car and how they want it to drive. You can drive it like a car, not appliance, which most hybrids are. So I have good news and I have bad news. The good news, we have incredibly early access to a rather special vehicle. The bad news, we have incredibly early access to a rather special vehicle. So special, pricing does not yet exist, but a build sheet does, which means we can play a pseudo round of the options game. So with that, 2021 Porsche Panamera 4 SE Hybrid, this one finished in a very unique color. Now, normally I am not a fan of brown cars. And when they told me this car was going to be brown, I'm like, mm, you know what? Maybe I don't want that one. Especially one called Truffle Brown Metallic. But when you see this thing in person, Santa Maria Madre de Dios, I have changed my tune on brown cars. And to that, we add a stunning shade, really two-tone shade of saddle brown and Luxor beige leather interior. And when I say leather interior, everything is leather. What we really need to focus on in this pseudo round of the options game is what makes this car special, not the usual options. Yes, it's got head-up display and, and carbon ceramic rotors and 21-inch wheels and the laser beam headlights. All of that stuff is great. And yes, it does have a Burmester stereo. However, it also has leather on the door jams. We're not talking just the doors. The bottom part where the door meets the car, that is covered in leather. Now, perhaps this is a bit of a public service announcement, but you need to belt in because the leather does not stop there. The grab rails in the ceiling of the car, leather, the surround of the steering column, leather, the instrument cluster, not just the top, but around the instrument cluster, leather, the consoles around the front seats. You know what's usually plastic? That is leather. But wait, there's more. The edge of the floor mats, leather. Then to complement all of this leather, the Porsche crests, they are emblazoned into the rear headrests of the car. The headliner itself changes from cloth to something that they call race techs, which is a pseudo faux suede. Then there is a change, which I rarely see in Porsches and never have seen it in a Porsche Panamera. Absolutely changes everything about the interior. And that is a dark walnut interior package. So a wood dash and wood on the doors. Now granted, I would much prefer a satin finish wood, but this still a nice touch. Even the steering wheel is half leather and half wood. Now, being that we are discussing a hybrid, I do need to point out that this car is fitted with an onboard 7.2 kilowatt AC charger, which leads us to one final option. And that is something that I have not seen fitted from the factory into a car in over 10 or 15 years. And that would be a six disc CD DVD changer. Brakes and hybrids are a special kind of trouble. Here it's somewhat mitigated. Uh, when driving very aggressively like this, it has the feel of a normal brake pedal in a normal gasoline powered car. However, where things are very different in this hybrid is the pedal feel itself, not the modulation, the pedal feel, meaning the travel of the pedal. At the top of the pedal feel, there is that on off switch that you get in more pedestrian hybrids. But when you drive the car incredibly aggressively, kind of like I'm doing right now, please don't try this at home, pedal feel all the way to the bottom of the floor, that returns to what you expect from a performance car and frankly a Porsche. Need to share a little bit behind the scenes in order to drive home a rather important point. Both this car as well as the GT Silver Turbo S were scheduled at exactly the same time and booked back to back, meaning drove the GT Silver car first, then handed that car back and got this. However, this car was originally scheduled to be a standard wheelbase fastback Panamera in white, arguably the hardest color to shoot. Then last minute, someone in Zuffenhausen changed their mind and put this car on the plane to LAX. 
Now, I am not a huge brown car fan, but this truffle brown, wunderbar. It completely stands out. And then this one turned out to be the executive model, which also sports the business class type seats that have been pilfered from the aviation world and a screen in the back that controls virtually everything in the car. Now, yes, we did cover most of the Porsche exclusive manufacturer options in our pseudo options game, but that really doesn't encapsulate what's going on here with this specific car. Uh, there's no other way to put it. This is a one of one car. I was even talking to one of the guys at Porsche and both of us agree that really who would build something like this? Most Panameras are built as more sporty cars. This with the truffle brown exterior, the Luxor beige interior that's two-tone, and then the wood dash absolutely transforms the personality of the car. And then it is only at that point when you begin to layer on very oddball options, great case in point, a leather covered hood release that you understand the impact of putting together a one of one car like this. And it's really a shame that more people don't do it. And now the star of the show, full E power mode. Here we need to drive it a bit reserved because I want to try to keep it in electric mode. Right now we're going about 30 miles an hour. Notice the tachometer still at zero. This is kind of the speeds you would drive around town. We're at 36, 35 miles an hour. You could accelerate a little bit. And what you are looking at, ladies and gentlemen, is a much more inexpensive, less complicated Taycan. That said, this is where the party ends. I want to get aggressive going into this turn, foot all the way to the floor, notice the gas engine kicks on. Once I return to asking the car for less load, that's when it goes back into EV mode. And here I can vary how fast or slow I want to drive. Granted, you can't be foot to the floor, but it can drive as an EV for at least 22 miles left that I've got now. Let me take a wild guess as to what you were thinking throughout this entire episode. That car is cool and all, but does it mean we have to give up that completely bonkers Porsche Panamera Turbo SE hybrid, which had like what, 680 horsepower and 700 or so pound feet of torque? Uh, well, the answer to that is sometime in the near future, you and I will be driving on even more powerful version of that car. And I can't believe I'm saying this. I really hope it's brown.